So artificial gravity. How do you approach this through sound and vibration? Okay, so first we have to figure out what is sound. <laughs> now, sound is very interesting. Um, now, the way we normally break up sound and sort of the different frequencies is we'll say like 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz that's like what the human uh, ear can hear and then you go above 20,000 hertz and that's ultrasonic um, sound you can't hear uh, and then you go down below 20 hertz and you have sort of um, uh, like below 20 it like almost sounds like a a note but it also sounds very rhythmic you can like feel it more than you can hear it um, and then and then you get down to like the low single digit hertz which are usually sort of like called beats or whatever right they like four hertz it's four times per second it sounds very rhythmic um, and then you get down to one hertz And then zero, you can't go below zero. Um, and I think this is where gravity lives, is between zero and one hertz. Okay. How do I prove that? So, <laughs> okay, well, if you look at one hertz, it's one oscillation per second. And This is a lot like an impulse function, right? In math, we have the, this idea of an impulse function being sort of an instantaneous um, uh, burst of energy all at once. And normally when we're down in this low hertz range, So because everything, if everything's a wave, then the impulse function has to be a wave, right? So, So just like a single impulse, we can call that like a single one hertz wave, right? A single um, waveform. Now, if 
what's cool about impulse functions is that you can use them to get to a higher frequency. So, oops, an impulse function. Um, so I'm applying the entire frequency. And I hit the string and make a note, then I'm putting this impulse function into the string. And I think what's normally described is that this is sort of like all of the frequencies at once. And so therefore, it will end up resonating with its um, natural resonant frequency, which in this case is E, um, because E happens to be in all the frequencies, which is in the impulse function. But I don't think this is right. so. because the impulse function has to be a wave. And so, instead, it the way it's like one hertz, it's, or below, it's just a, a gravity one punch, but it can, it can step up to the E frequency because it's actually really close to being E. Not that it's, um, not that the impulse function has all of the frequencies, it's just that because it's so low frequency, it actually is close to every frequency. Okay, so how can I prove this? So, if we take here, we have E, and then I can go an octave up, and I can get another E. Now, if I go an octave up, but I go down a, uh, a half step, and we get a um, D sharp, B flat, and then I also play the lower E with it. You can hear this wobbling dissonance. That's because the notes are close, but they're not exact. But when I play them, you hear that sounds like one note even though I'm playing a low note and a high note together sounds like a cohesive note because they're very, very, very close together. <laughs> but here, further apart, so they sound distant, and then of course you go further apart and you can get more harmonic. Well, that's a story for another day. So, <laughs> if we're... Here, what's interesting is that if I go up, so I'm here at this E, and we're up one octave at this E. If I go up another octave, but then go down again to the D sharp, where's the dissonance?
and go up another octave. Go down to the D sharp. There's even less. And sort of this weird thing with music theory, like the further the notes are apart, the closer they sound together. <laughs> right, we're octaves apart here. And the frequencies sound like they're close together. Which is really interesting. And and so if we take this and go down in frequency to the impulse function, to just a single hit of the string, then we can see how it actually is able to resonate with the string and make an E. It's not because it contains every frequency, it's because once you're down that low, you're so close that you can resonate with everything. You can step up your, you can use your energy to step up to a higher frequency and be able to resonate with any frequency. Which means the opposite is also true. That you could start with a higher frequency and step all the way down to a lower frequency, like gravity. So one thing that's really interesting is that if you take the same frequency and you add up um, different octaves of that frequency, like every oscillator playing each octave of it, um, the waveform that you get ends up looking something sort of like this. And what you see here is that the, um, like I mentioned in a previous video about how um, We have these systems like the putt-putt boat or whatever that uses pulses and is able to, or the, um, the app you can get on your phone that um, acts like a fan with your phone speaker, it's able to push more in one direction than the other. And what's interesting when you do those octaves and you add them all up and you get this this kind of waveform, it looks like it's kind of doing that, right? You, you end up um, having these spikes up in one direction, and then 
the vibration get down, but then a, a spike that's more, right, there's more of a spike than there is coming down when you're vibrating like that. But the sound itself is quite smooth because it's it's all resonant with each other. And so So if you were to um You know, maybe that is the waveform, and even the garbage for value, it, it might be more complicated than that. Um, everything usually is, but um, and so when doing that, you can imagine sort of the. How it's playing through a speaker, like the the speaker is vibrating, but overall it has like this low frequency pulse to it, and then you can potentially phase a bunch of these together, and somehow and that can give you your force for pulling down or, or pushing down. Now, <laughs> this is a fun kind of aside. What's interesting when you do the math for an octave, like in, in, in music theory, Call it an octave because it's based on eight, um, eight notes in the scale. But mathematically, and with the frequencies, it's always um, the power of two to get either like the next octave or the or the one below it. So like, if um, we're at four hundred and forty hertz, which is A. We double it and we get um, 880 hertz. And then if we half it, then we get uh, 220 hertz. And if we half it again, we get 110. And you know, we take 880, double it, you get an, and all of these are are A. They're the different octaves of A. And they're all powers of two. But why is it two? <laughs> Always two. Waves only have two states. 
you know, the positive, the negative, the positive pressure, the negative pressure, the top part of the wave, the bottom part of the wave, it's always two. And so it's just interesting because if you take Like that's why they sound like the same note and are the same note. It's because when you double it, then you have <laughs> two cycles per the one cycle. Way more there. <laughs> if you want to get into prime numbers and stuff, and this this is artificial gravity. So Prime would not be able to get to it. Okay, all right, so there is more here. So. Okay, so if Gravity is just a wave. What does it look like? What's interesting is we've observed gravitational waves, but these are from black holes colliding. And so the idea being that these black holes, so much density, so much energy in this collision, that it sends us such a massive wave that it ripples 
all the space times the light years around. So. That's a wave. And so... Like... The Earth, it has... It's gravity. And... The moon has its gravity, and the, the sun has its own gravity. But we're all in orbit with each other. Like the moon's orbiting the earth, or it's more orbiting the sun. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> um... And so, through this, we must be creating gravity waves as well, right? Um, like, we're not colliding with black holes, so we're not making so much, so many waves that it's traveling for light years throughout the universe, but... Um, we'd still have to be making ripples throughout space as the Earth's moving, as the the Moon is moving. those ripples that's different from the the gravity waves holding us down on Earth. Because those are all pointing down, right? They're all pulling down. So if it is, if everything is a wave, what would this look like? And I would have to imagine it would somewhat resemble a whirlpool. So if we imagine a whirlpool, we have this wave where we have all the energy swirling around and going down. But in a whirlpool in water, where you normally see them, much like a time traveler or something. Um, then um, a whirlpool is like one slice. in 3D, so if, it, if we're doing the whole Earth, it wouldn't just be one whirlpool, it's right, like this, if a whirlpool is going down through my hand here, and we say that this is a whirlpool, 
and then we have the Earth, then it would be like whirlpools all around an infinite number of them. in all directions. <laughs> and how does this, where does this wave come from? <laughs> It comes from a higher frequency vibration. What's that higher frequency vibration? The spin of the atom. So a bunch of atoms get together. They're all vibrating. And they all resonate this low frequency gravity wave. This is why it's a weak force. It's just a vibration. And so if I want to pick something up off the table. It doesn't take very much effort to do so. Why is that? Well, it's vibrating, right? All the atoms are vibrating. It's got a vibe. And I've got a vibe. <laughs> and then I touch the object, we're vibing together. So, when I lift it up, we're just sort of changing the resonance. We're not 
there isn't much of a there's no like magnetic bond or anything that we're pulling against. Just the vibration changes. So could you make artificial gravity using a speaker? something similar. Sounds like it could be possible. 